must be by his death. And for my part, I know no personal cause to spurn at him, but for the general. He would be crowned! How that might change his nature, there's the question. It is the bright day that brings forth the adder. And that craves wary walking. Crown him? And then, High Grant, we put a sting in him, that at his will he may do danger with. The abuse of greatness is when it disjoins remorse from power. But to speak true of Caesar, I have not known when his affections have swayed more than his reason. But just a common proof that lowliness is young ambition's ladder unto which the clamour upward turns his face when he attains the utmost round. He then unto the ladder turns his back, looks to the clouds, scorning the base degrees by which he did ascend. So Caesar may. Then Lest he may prevent. And as the quarrel has no colour for the thing he is, fashion it does. That as he is, when augmented, would run from these to these extremities. Therefore, think him as a serpent's egg that when hatched would, as his kind, grow mischievous and kill him in the shell. Listen, I know that this sort of thing is new to you. You haven't had much experience, but this is an opportunity that you must grab with both hands. No, it's going to be hard. But if you can relax, take a deep breath, and I know you can take this. All of it. I tell you, you do want this, don't you? Yes. Say it louder. With conviction. Yes, I want it. Good man. Now get out there. Can I help you? <clears throat> Friends. Countrymen. Chicagoans and Ciceronians. When a year ago, old Dogsboro, God rest his honest soul, with tearful eyes, appealed to me to protect Chicago's green goods trade. Though moved, I doubted whether my abilities would match up to his smiling confidence. Now, Dogsboro is dead. He left a will, which you're all free to read, in simple terms therein, he calls me his son and thanks me most fervently for all that I have done since I responded to his appeal. The green goods trade is now amply protected in Chicago, thanks in no small measure, though I say so myself, to resolute action on my part. When another public figure, Ignatius Dolfoot, came to me with the same request, this time regarding Cicero, I consented to take the city under my protection. One stipulation I made, namely, the dealers had to want me. They had to make their free decision freely arrived at. Cicero, I told my men, in no uncertain terms, 
must not be subjected to coercion or constraint. They have to elect me in full freedom. What I wanted was a unanimous and joyful yes. Succinct and men of Cicero, expressive. And because I want all of this and everything else to be complete, I turn to you, men of Chicago, because you know me better, and because you hold me, I believe, in very high esteem, I ask you, who is for me? And let me just add in passing, if you're not with me, you're against me. And you only got yourselves to blame if anything happens. Now you may vote. You know, it's one of those days where you're just going to do it. You might do it. I suppose mostly I'm a bit of a cold fish. But at times like this, things hot up. It's been a bit of a bad patch for me. Fucking landlady. Pardon my French. Despite I told her I don't eat lamb, Despite I told her I'm not a big eater, despite I made that clear, comes through on the plate, and I've eaten it before I've said, this isn't lamb, is it? And it was! And I got out with, who's it? Raymond Quantock, and that was name from work, Dick Bottle. I've kept up with them putting it away, otherwise. And drank five lagers and four Jack Daniels. Then I've gone over on that damn foot again. Lightning strike of pain has put me in a right strop. Nobody better mess with me. Nobody better mess with Been sort of offish and... I just see her. And I decide, I'm gonna get her in the van. I just wanna keep her for a bit. Spend some time with her. I'll just do it. It's a rush of blood. Hello. Hello. I said hello. Are you deaf? It's rude to ignore people. Are you a loony? <laughs> You're a loony. <laughs> oh, no need to get the ump. Not with me. I just said hello. 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 I'm saying hello to you. Least you can do is make conversation. What kind of world is this? Folk can't be sociable. Polite. Least you can do is make a response. It's bad manners if you don't. Bad manners. Rude. Hello. 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 And finally, finally, she says, hello. I think she quite liked me. Oh yeah, she was interested. Van's only 50 yards away, it's convenient. Obviously I've left the door unlocked because I've thought ahead. Obviously she wants to come. Got some cushions in the back and a sleeping bag, obviously. Sometimes, you're fucked by circumstances, things don't go your way. The garden shears, I don't bargain for, but in the end, they turn out useful and add to it all, passing off efficiently and logistically. She's persuaded it's time to get in the van. You make it work. She's in the van. Lovely evening, sunny but with a light southerly breeze. 